words, if I could rephrase it, your emphasis is on a large release, not on the fact that a release would be likely, and your testimony doesn't really give us any information as to what you would find not to be a large release. Of concern to emergency planners and of concern to public health are large releases. Small releases are not consequential to public health and safety. It takes a very large release of substantial quantities of radioactivity to have a major impact on public health and safety. Okay, well, major impact. I, now, <clears throat> again, this is an area I'm unfamiliar with, but it would seem to me that since your response planning is evacuation, that the concern level would be one of a release that rises to the level of a causing an evacuation. Our response plans deal from all the way from very minor to very major. In the most serious accident, evacuation <coughs> excuse me, may be an appropriate, probably is an appropriate response. A sheltering may also be an appropriate response. So we do not disregard in any way that that may be happening. And in fact, our plans, as you heard from uh, NRC, do take into consideration those kinds of, cons of events, ones in which there is a very large release of, of very massive quantities of radioactivity. That kind of event necessitates actions which may include evacuation, sheltering, movement of people. Okay, but, but let, me get, let me get back to, to what my point is. It, it seems to me that the whole point of doing the evaluation of the possibility of a terrorist attack on a nuclear facility, what actions need to be taken, and, and the ability of looking at the safety of the public is to try to avoid its consequences. Your statement is that to, at this time, there is, there, it is unlikely that a terrorist attack to a facility would result in a release that would even result in an evacuation? Yes, because in order for a terrorist event to be successful, it would have to do the kind of damage that either melts the nuclear core or similarly the fuel in the spent fuel pool. To accomplish that is extremely difficult even for a well-armed, sophisticated terrorist group. For example... No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well-armed, but your statement says the type of attacks that we have seen um, on, on civilian targets, which includes, of course, the World Trade Center attack. And again, there are people before you who have testified that, in fact, there is that risk. And I don't dismiss it, sir. The, an airplane, for example, of the type that was used at the World Trade Center, if it were used as a terrorist weapon, and it is the type which we have seen in the past, so I don't dismiss it. If it were to crash into the reactor containment building, studies have shown that that structure would resist that kind of crash. In the case of Indian Point, a f the fuel pools are similar structures with the exception of their roofs, but they are also largely below ground. So they're well protected as well by adjacent buildings and other structures, as well as their position from those kind of attacks. The, the airplane attack, uh, so I don't dismiss it. In fact, I, we do indeed consider it. 